folks, Dan Frey here, the Raid Update. Today, thanks, welcome to my uh, live cast. We're going to wait for some people to join us. Um, but what I want to talk about this today, we're going to talk about non-QM programs, mortgage programs that you don't even or have probably never even heard of. Just so to let you guys know, I'm in the Chicagoland area. It's supposed to be 70 today. So I'm going to try to make this less than an hour, but it depends on how many questions you guys ask. So let's get to it. Let's talk about uh, first thing foremost, let's go over to my website and I'm going to bring up the tune or bring up the speed on what's going on with the website and the new features that we're going to have. But if you want to check out me and my services, please go to the rateupdate.com. You're going to scroll over here. There's ways to get a hold of us through here. But some of the features that we have that a lot of people don't know about is if you're a realtor and you want to um, get involved, maybe getting some referrals from us for people from people in your area. I uh, just go to the rate update and hit the inquiry form right here. You're going to click realtor and then just fill out the form. We're going to put you on our database list. Uh, so then you guys could get, if we have any clients in that area that's looking for a realtor in that area, we're going to reach out to you guys. Okay. So that's what we're going over right now, guys, is the website. If you're a mortgage uh, advisor and you might've got let go, or you're just looking for another opportunity. Also where you go is go to inquiry forms, mortgage advisors. We're always looking for some good advisors. All right, so the rest of the channel, the, the features that we're adding on a weekly basis is if you scroll down through here, this is probably the coolest feature uh, one of the coolest features on the website is right through here. Basically, what you do is you put in your information in that. So you go to Zillow, you go to Redfin, you go to all these all these websites, and you you try to figure out what the what's the value of your home, um, and it gives you some some stuff. This thing is really cool. What you do is you put in the address, it'll pull up and say, "Here's what your house is worth," and then if you put in your email address. Um, we don't sell the data. We don't do anything with it. Basically, you go in a database. It's to help you guys and give you opportunities. If you're looking to refinance or if you're looking to sell, there's agents in there. If you're looking for uh, refinance opportunities, it'll, it has mortgage calculators built in. If you're looking to rent the place as an Airbnb, it tells you, you know, what you can get out of that. And then the other features we just added this week is right here. If you want to stay up to date on what's going on with mortgage rates, you can just check here uh, throughout the whole day. And then the other thing is we just added our weekly newsletter uh, right here. So if you go into the website, you click there, it'll take you right to our newsletter and you get that on a weekly basis. Another thing, if you want, if you could sign up for our daily uh, newsletter and I post this all over social media and then it goes over where rates are and the MBS markets and so forth. So let's get on to what the what the uh, today's event is about. So we're, we're going to talk today about non-QM programs. So a lot of people think, okay, Dan, you guys are starting to push those those crappy subprime loans again. Well, no. And, and the reason behind it was those loans were based on one of the biggest caveats of those loans. They were on interest only, teaser rates, adjustable, amort non-amortized loans, the whole gamut. They didn't make any sense. And I, as I have new employees in my office, you know, we sit down and they're like, okay, this is a housing bubble. I'm like, yeah, this is kind of housing bubble, but that bubble back then, that was nuts. All right. So let's get on to it. Some of the programs that you probably don't know about. Okay. I have a whole slew of them here and we're just going to go over the top ones that we really see or I see on a weekly basis that's growing in our portfolio. One of the biggest things we have is, let me share my screen again, is right here. This is called the DSCR, Debt Service Coverage Ratio. Okay, this is for investors. So if you're an investor out there, this is your program. And I'm gonna get to more. If you're in, if you're in the country and you have an ITIN number, um, if you have a bunch of assets, we have, we have people that have millions of dollars in crypto, uh, so they have the assets, they just can't qualify for a loan. Okay, so let's go over the debt service coverage ratio first. This thing basically is, the breakdown of it is your credit score, as long as your credit score qualifies. Now we kind of throw out the window, your tax returns, um, your, your bank statements, everything else, as long as the property cash flows, meaning as long as your the rents of the property meets or covers your principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and association fees. So basically everything could, that could be incorporated in your mortgage payment, as long as the rents equal that, you should be fine. Okay. But the thing here is what happens is you have to have skin in the game. Okay. So if you're looking to buy a rental property, you can see down through here, if you're looking to buy, you need 20% down and that's right in this range here. Okay. You can go to an 80% uh, loan to value. If you're looking to cash out, you can go to 75%. Okay, so that's this is probably one of the biggest programs that we have right now. Okay, the other thing is there's an there's a bank statement program, 
that we have. Um, there is asset depletion. So again, there's a lot of police, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of cash. So let me get out of that screen and bring back to me. All right. So if you're out there and you're just having a tough time qualifying because you don't have cash flow, meaning you don't have a job or you don't have a W-2 job, or you're working for cash and you're like, I, I can't get a buy a property. Well, if you're looking for a primary home, we could do one of several different things. Maybe we can look at our uh, no asset or no um let me go back to here. There's an asset utilization qualifier. There's an alternative income qualifier. There's a no ratio qualifier. There's an agency plus, an alternative doc. What most of them do is this. You have the assets. So we take the assets and we either divide your total assets by 36 months or there's a combination of calculations that we can use when trying to calculate your income. So that's the biggest piece, or this is the biggest uh, program that we have right now. So please ask them, ask some questions. The whole gist of this show is I, I post videos every day. So if you're on here, you probably watch me every day or you, you catch the videos that I do. But I'm trying to open up the format so you guys can ask me questions because a lot of times you'll call in and you'll talk to one of my people or you'll go online, but you really don't, don't get to talk to me. So please ask any questions that you have and we'll, we'll dissect that. I'm trying to get guests on here. So if you're a realtor out there, you're a financial planner uh, and, and you're looking to get a little bit more exposure on the web, please reach out to me because what I want to do basically on, the, on this site is talk about housing. Housing in general, okay? So let me let me put it this way. A house goes on the market. You might say the price is crazy. So you're like, I'm not going to buy it because the, the price is inflated. Somebody's buying that house, okay? And that's the biggest thing we want to talk about. And then giving you guys the opportunities of the programs out there that you aren't familiar with that could help you purchase that property. All right, so while we're waiting for more and more people to come in and the, and the questions to be post, posted, let's go over one program that you've, you've heard about, but many times it just, it, it might not make sense, okay? And that's down payment assistance, all right? So if you're looking for to buy a property on a primary home, there are a lot of programs out there that are called DPAs, they're down payment assistance programs. What they do is they basically come in and they'll give you maybe two or three or five or six percent of the purchase price of the property as a grant. Some of them is free money. Basically, you get the money and then you walk out of the closing and there is nothing. There's no lien on the property. There's no payments needing made. There's nothing uh, of that. Some are grants. Some are liens. But it depends on which one you get into. So what we want to talk about is, is it worth it? OK, so the normal program on a down payment assistance program is this. It'll give you, say, three or four or five percent of the loan amount to help you with your down payment. OK, but what a lot of people fail to tell you, especially in the videos and when you call and so forth, is there's a lot of costs involved. OK, on our side of the equation, um, it's we, we have to charge you because we're a third party in that transaction. We charge you or any mortgage advisor you go to or even a bank that you go to. The entities with the down payment assistance is, is usually third or fourth parties. So banks, credit unions, brokers, lenders and everything. We don't we have to go to that entity to get the down payment assistance money. So how we make money is we have to charge you a point or two. Okay, so let's just dive in in this. Let's say, for example, the grant gives you 3% uh, of the purchase price is a down payment assistance, okay? Well, we might charge you one or two points for that, okay? That leaves you down to one. Not me or us. Everybody's going to do that in most cases. So let's go. So in that case, I would highly suggest you not do it because let's say, for example, rates today are 399 but that to get into that program, you actually have to take that loan and the loan rate might be 499. Okay? Doesn't make any sense cuz you're going to pay that back in multiples over the life of the loan. All right? So, there are some programs that it's basically free money. That's fine too, but again, you have to pay a higher rate. So, the only time I would truly suggest a down payment assistance program is if you're getting ample money. You're getting more than you kind of need because let's say for example, you're getting 5 or 6% of the loan amount as a down payment assistance. Okay? We charge you one or two. Okay, or the, your bank charges you or your other lender charges you. Then the place we're getting the down payment assistance from, they're going to charge about a thousand bucks. So let's say that eats away another percent. So you're down to 
Okay, that's still ample enough to give you the money for the down payment. So that's about the only time that I would really recommend a down payment assistance. And there's all kind of alternatives uh, to this. So let's get on to the questions. Uh, honey buns, I'm scared. Okay, guys, I that's that's I'm sure that's your screen name, but please, I don't have a moderator, so please watch the comments. No vulgar language. I don't want to boot you out of here. We're basically here as a friendly, you know, Saturday afternoon thing to 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 educate you guys on what's going on. And I'm in Chicago today. The temperature is supposed to be 70 degrees out. So right after this, I'm running outside and get a bunch of stuff done around the yard. Okay, so Mono, um, let's see what we got here. Is it possible to use the DSCR uh, for a multiple family house hack, live in, rent out? You know, th absolutely. Okay, so let, let me go through the DSCR. Basically, I had it up on the screen. I won't pull it up again. Here's, here's the basics of this. And that's what I want to talk about on the on, on the live events. I'm going to give you the basics. I'm going to kind of scratch the surfaces and then call in so we can do our due diligence and really pick your brain on what exactly you're doing and looking for so we can make sense of it. Okay. So basically what a lot of people are doing, I had a client, I had several clients call in this week that have 10, 15, 20, 30 properties. And they're like, I just can't get lending anymore or it's hard money or so forth. So the DSCR program, there's no limit on the amount of properties you can own or finance. Okay, so that's num number one. In your case, in, in this, um, yes, as long as the rents from the property equal or exceed, in some cases you can go a little bit less, but as long as they equal or exceed what that mortgage payment is going to be, and the mortgage payment is everything included, your taxes, your insurance, if there's an association, and so forth. But you can actually go up to and they just revised this. I'm pretty sure we can now go up to eight units, okay, in that program. So there is huge opportunity there for investors because investors are still buying homes, okay, guys. Houses are going on the market, and everybody's, you know, they're going nuts because house values are going up. And then you keep seeing, you know, the housing bubble is going to blow up and all this other stuff. Guys, people are going to buy and sell homes, and people are still buying it. And investors are still loading up. Now, are they right or wrong? Only time's going to tell. I still don't think we are in a bubble that's going to pop. And that's my take on that. So thank you so much for the question. But yes, please call in to us on Monday. Let us explore all the options that you have available for you on the DSCR program. All right, let's get over to Sherry. Hi, yes, down payment assistance programs are worth it, even though the interest rates are higher. Hi, yes. However, uh, Sherry, let's let's look at this. Some of the down payment programs available. The one you might you might have been offered is is fantastic. We usually do our due diligence, so when we go out there and offer this program to you, it makes sense. Okay, but there are programs out there that'll give you three percent as a down payment assistance program. Right? We we or your lender or whoever you're using might take two of those, leaving you like one percent. All right. In that case, if you're going to get 1% of the loan amount, and let's say it's a $300,000 loan, you get 3000 bucks. Is it worth paying a higher rate that might raise your payment hundred bucks a month? So within the first year, you've already exceeded the benefit that you received. And now you're just paying a higher interest rate over, over the term. So there's, there's our programs out there. And like I said, you might, you might've gotten into one of those that gave you substantial amount of money to do this. But one caveat behind those I want to talk about is when you get the down payment assistance program, make sure or figure out what kind it is. Okay. Is it a lien on the home? Is it due payable back? Or is it purely just forgivable? What I mean by forgivable, you walk out of the closing and it's not even known that you ever did it. OK, and that's what we want to talk about because you're stuck at that high rate. OK, let's say rates stagnate and they just stay the same. You can't refinance into a lower rate unless you pay off that loan, that grant, that down payment assistance money. So you're kind of stuck with that program. Eventually, you will pay it back in most cases, but you have to weigh the odds. Is it is it worth paying the higher rate for the amount of money that you're getting? But in your case. Yes, but there are many cases, Sherry, that don't make any sense. Okay, and that's what we try to explain to you guys. Uh, the next thing, thanks, Dan. Do you lend? Uh, yes, we do. You know what? Do me a favor. Shoot me an email. Let me check because we got licensing coming in every day. So shoot me an email. It's dan at, I think it's down below, at theRateUpdate.com, and I'll email you back first thing on Monday and let you know. We have several licenses uh, out there. We're multiple licenses out there uh, that we're just waiting for the states to approve us in. So thank you so much for reaching out. We'd love to help you guys. Uh, Jesse, 
Let's see what we got here. Hello, is there a program for 1099 employees uh, for one year and four months? Yes. Okay, that's another program. Here's here's what we're going to discuss. I'm just going to talk to you about it and briefly uh, just just outlay this for you. So I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm just going to read off of this uh, just to go over these programs. Now, let's let me explain. They're a little gray. Okay, and here's what I mean. We really have to dissect your situation. So the only way to really know for sure that you're going to qualify is to call in and talk to us. It's not a hard sale. We're not going to try to bait and switch it to something else. We're going to basically say, like in your case, hey, what can I get with the 1099 program? And we're going to explain it to you. Uh, and how you guys reach me, just email me at the dan at the rateupdate.com. But one of the, here, let me just go through the multiple ones that really are taking off for us. Uh, so I can explain it to you guys. The alternative income. That's one of the areas that you, you, you want to look into. Bank statement programs. So you can go off at 12 months or 24 months bank statements. So in your case, it might be better off to put you into the 12 month bank statement program because you're de probably depositing that money. But if not, then we can maybe go to the 1099 program. If that doesn't work, then we go to the no, no doc program and so forth. So let me let me just give you the highlights of the program names. And then we'll discuss them as you guys ask questions. So the alternative income uh, packet, it comes with it bank statements, one year full doc income or 1099 income. Okay, so that says one year. You go up to 90% loan to value, up to 1.5 million with a 660 credit score. Okay, so again, guys, this isn't the, the, the crap loans from years ago, the subprime stuff that you go 100, 110% loan to value with a 580 credit score and they really didn't even try to qualify you. This is, you have to show something. You have to show there's cash flow. You have to show something and then you need skin in the game. That skin in the game is the amount of money you need down. So for example, in this one, 90% loan to value, meaning you need to bring in 10%. And then if your credit score, um, if you want to go up to $2 million, you can go 70, uh, 80% loan. You can go 80% loan to value with a 720 credit score. The loan amounts can go up to $3 million. So that is the alternative doc program. Now let's get into the no ratio program. No income or DTI uh, calculations qualified on your asset balances. So that's an interesting one because I had two loans this week. And let me explain these to you just so you guys get it. We have, there's a lot of people out there with substantial amount of money. And there's a lot of younger people out there with a substantial amount of money. Uh, my son stopped by today and he's a huge investor in cryptocurrencies and he knows how to manipulate all these all these sites and all this stuff and, and do all kinds of things. And he's amassing a, a substantial amount of uh, assets through that. So a lot of people are in that position, but, and they're looking to buy maybe a bigger house or even just try to qualify in today's world. And they're basically, they're rich with money or assets, but their income doesn't really qualify them. But they're sitting here with two, three, five, six million dollars. Okay. So what's happening with that is a lot of the lenders are figuring this out. So they're coming in and saying, you know what, we can, we can use that asset. So what we'll do is possibly take that, take your total assets and divide it by maybe 240 months. And that could be added to your monthly income. Some even go as aggressive as they'll take your assets and divide it by 36 months. And that could be treated as your asset. So when you do things like that, you can get approved. Okay, so that's that's the uh, that's that program. And then for nationals, we do that asset utilization qualifications. That's uh, that as well. An alternative income 1099 income. And that'll go to, in your case, uh, Jesse, that'll go up to 90% loan to value, loan amounts up to 3 million with a 660 credit score. So if that's in your situation, you know, reach out to us on Monday. Uh, my banner's down below here. Let me swap out my banner so you guys can get my phone number and all the other stuff. Let's see if that one works. Yep, there it is. Okay, so that's that part of it. Uh, sorry, I'm flying solo today. I don't have anybody working all the screens for me. So I'm looking down and up and down and up and down. And I'm at home. Like I said, it's supposed to be 70 in Chicago today. And then it's supposed to snow on Monday. Go figure. So I'm going to try to get out there and weed and burn some brush and stuff like that. So yeah, I am in Chicago, but I'm out in the suburbs. All righty. So let's get on to the next question. And we have, is there VA investment programs? Uh, is the VA investment program a part of the four unit building? VA, is there a, I think you're asking. VA only, you can only buy 
a primary home with a VA loan. OK, same thing with FHA. You can you can only use those programs. It is going to be your primary home. However, there is one take on that. If you already have a VA loan and you already well, if you already have an FHA loan, I'm going to have to look into this on VA. If you already have an FHA loan, you can you can refinance it even once you move out. OK, so let's say you moved, you have an FHA loan and you moved out three, four years ago and you have another mortgage. But then that VA or the FHA loan is, you know, still has PMI on there and still the rate is up there a little bit. You can refinance that. You can either do an FHA streamline, which is pretty simple. All you need to do is you have to have a credit score of 620 or higher and no income documentation, just not have missed a mortgage payment in the last 12 months, and you basically qualify. So that's that's if you're looking for an FHA. VA, I'll look into that. I apologize. I'll let you know. But you cannot do an FHA or a VA loan if the property is an investment property, only if you're looking to refinance that property or that loan that you initially bought as a primary home. So I hope that makes sense. All right. So any other questions? Let's dive in on uh, one of the things we were talking about just briefly. The down payment assistance program is robust. And like Sherry just mentioned, you know, a lot of people are getting into it, but watch what you're getting into. Make sure you have all your options. Just the other day, I did a video and I explained what we do. Okay. Basically what I was trying to explain to everybody is on basically one click of the button, you apply with us and then we scan. It's like going to Expedia. Uh, dot com. That's where I buy all my airline tickets. I go there, I check, I want to go from here to Florida. Boom. And it scans all the airlines and lets me know what's the best option for me. Okay. That's what we offer you guys when it comes to a mortgage. You apply with us. We scan the whole country over. There's probably 150, 200 lenders in there. And then we get back with you on which one has the best program for you. But a lot of times what we have to do is we have to sort and filter through this because just because your credit score is there doesn't mean you automatically qualify. All right, so I need more questions, guys. But let's talk about what I want to talk about next week. And those those are on that are on here right now, please stay because this I need your input. All right, what I want to really discuss is you see the YouTube videos and all the advertisements and everything that we're in a bubble, okay? Are we in a bubble? Please give me your feedback if, if you think we're in a bubble, because that's one of the biggest things I want to talk about too. But so ask me questions on alternative programs. Uh, but I just went over the, the alternative programs that you probably didn't know about. And a lot of times people say, guys, or Dan, that's those are those subprime loans. Again, guys, they're not. Please, I'm not. I'm trying to explain to you. They're not. All right. So let's get on. Thanks, Dan. Do you lend in, Matt? I answered that one. Uh, let's see that. Got that. Okay. We're, we're caught up with all the questions. Uh, here's what I want to talk about on housing. And you, I, I need your input. Even if you just quote down there saying I'm crazy or whatever. Is there a bubble? Well, I don't think so. And, and what causes a bubble or what causes things to really uh, blow up? It's when there's more supply than demand. Okay. But again, what my channel is trying to do, I'm trying to explain to you guys, if you want to buy, now, I'm not saying you, you need to buy, you, you don't need to buy. I'm a, a mortgage broker, okay? Somebody's going to buy that house. A house goes on the market, somebody's going to buy it. We do lenders for investors, investor groups, companies, individuals. Somebody's going to buy that house. So we get those mortgages in, okay? I'm trying to educate people to say, okay, yes, our house is a little inflated. Maybe. Yes. But how about rents? So what is your housing options? Do you, and let me let me know down, down below if I'm missing something. You can buy, rent, or live with family members. Or in some, a lot of parts of the country, they're, they're house hacking, meaning people are buying homes and just renting out rooms. Okay, that's a great, that's a great idea. But how about a family? So if you're a family, what do you do? So let's, let's get to the next question. Uh, I worked with Nico yesterday. And he got me pre-approved the same day. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for reaching out. That's what we're asking for you guys. I Nico's fantastic. He's been with me a couple years. 
He's one of the younger guys. I even have younger guys than him. Uh, they're the millennial group. They're starting in the millennial mortgage guys channel and websites. So stay tuned for that. I'll be bringing them on with that. But uh, yeah, reach out to us, guys. It doesn't take days to get approved or pre-approved. Now let's let's dive down this area. I want to I want to talk to you guys. So ask questions, but I'm just going to ramble here just to just get things out there so you guys understand things that are going on. So is there a difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification? Yes, there's a big difference. The pre-qualification is basically us saying, yeah, you, you should qualify. The pre-approval is us getting everything from you and getting back to you and saying, you're approved. Just find a house and we're buying it. Okay. So that's that part of the, the pre-approval process. Um, i trying to think of some other programs that we have the, this week that kind of uh, come up to mind. We, Like I said, we have a lot of the DSCR programs. We have several this week uh, of pro people that are, have asset depletion programs. We have, if you're, if you're out there and you need a VA loan, um, we can do loans. We just got a loan in yesterday for $2.2 .2 million on a VA purchase. You can buy a $2 million home with no money down. Pretty good. Pretty good. And no PMI. So if you're out there and you have a VA, uh, you have VA benefits, God bless you. Thank you so much for doing what you do or did. Uh, we just lost my dad uh, about four or five months ago. He was a World War II veteran, and uh, he's moved on from now, but uh, we miss him daily, so that's that. So, all right, guys, come on. Please give me some videos here. Oh, some of the things that we're coming up with is tribal lending. Yeah, there, there's a young lady that reached out to us, Joanne, and asked us about tribal lending, and she is a huge help. She's helping us get into possibly seven tribes. Uh, so there are loans for uh, Indians tribal Indians. The, the caveat there was you don't own the land. Okay. So the tribe owns the land when you're on a reservation. So you can get normally a hundred year lease. Um, and that's how we do those financing. So you have to go through specific lenders for that. We are set up with the lenders for that. We had to do specific training for that. We did that. And we are now on our way to start doing more and more of the, the tribal or the Indian loans. I'm also looking into, I was on a, a YouTube channel uh, show just about a month ago, and a lot of it was manufactured homes. A lot of people were reaching out for manufactured homes. So I'm going to start doing more and more videos in regards to that. So check out my channel there as well. Uh, let's get on to the next question. I have been watching some time. I've been watching some time and now love your show. Thank you so much. And again, what, what I'm trying to do, this is it, truly, this is for you guys. Ask me questions, call in, you know, try our services. If you don't like it, you know, there it's a mortgage that you're looking for. We want to make sure we give you the over the top experience. And if we don't, there's a lot of options for you. OK, but that's what we're here for, to make sure you guys are educated. What started this channel was several years ago. And I posted the video just the other day was uh, it was kind of credit score hacks. And I kept seeing all these videos and about three, four years ago. That was the that was in vogue you know, credit score, how credit score repairs, how to get an 800 credit score in five minutes and all this other stuff. And I'm like, the information on there is such BS, but these people were having everybody brainwashed and they're getting hundreds of millions of clicks. And I'm like, the, the information is bad. So I did the video the other day. I think I posted it on Tuesday, uh, but only half of it posted. So I, get, I po pushed it out there again on Thursday morning or Friday morning. And it was just basically going over how to how to monitor your credit and try to get the most out of your credit scores with the least hassle possible. And that video is my first video that got like a quarter million hits like fairly quick. And I was like, dag, you know, but what people are saying is, you know, pay off your collections or just do disputes. Well, the disputes work for a little bit, but then all those accounts would come back on your on your uh, credit. And then when you hire all these credit repair companies, and I always say there's a lot of frogs out there to kiss there. And I've kissed a lot of them. They'll get three, four, five thousand from you. They'll send out dispute letters. They'll work with you for six or eight months and you're back to where you were at the beginning and you just blew five thousand bucks. So check out that video I just posted uh, in regards to credit scores. You, you'll get a lot of information out of there and there's really nothing required to buy or do or whatever. It's just how you can manipulate the system uh, to get you know better credit scores. OK, so let's get to the next one. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Dan and, and Rico. You betcha. 
All right, let's get to the next question. With 660 credit score and 6% down, can you can they use one-year tax returns and 140k gross? Absolutely. Okay, so let's let's dig down the how, how let me let me go over this. Here's how the mortgage process works. Let me let me just slide the curtain back. It's not rocket science. All right. So what you do is you apply online. You can take notes if you want. You're getting a mortgage. You scan around. Where, where are you going to find a mortgage? That's the hardest part. How and who to trust? Because there's so much BS out there, and there's so many people that give you bad information. I won't say I didn't say lie, but they'll just give you what you want to hear and then move you on. Okay, so here's what happens: you apply for a mortgage. Okay, well, let's first start out. How do you find a mortgage? Well, you can go to Lending Tree, and they'll scan your system. Well, they'll they'll basically you put in your information, and they'll sell they'll sell your data to up to ten people, and then they'll sell that data three or four months later. Uh, to some other group of 10 people, and that's how they make their money. So you could potentially have all your information out there to 10 different companies. What's going to happen? All those people are going to email you, call you, call you, email you, email, text you, call you. It'll drive you insane. Okay, so what's another way to do that? Well, me. Okay, and that's what I was trying to put out there this week. You go to one website, you apply. Okay, so you go to the rateupdate.com. You go in there and you click the top button, apply now. You fill out the application. All right, your application goes in our computer system. Based on the information you put in that questionnaire, it'll tell you what we need from you. Okay, and I, and I, I greatly appreciate your your comment, Jesse. And I'm getting to it, and I'm going to explain even more to you, probably in depth, so you guys understand it. So you put your information in that computer system, and then based on the the answers to the questions that you put in, it'll say, Hey, we need your W two. We need a pay stub. We needed this. We needed that. It's the general or generic information that's needed. Okay. Then we take your data. We pull your credit and then we upload it into two, one of two entities, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Uh, you probably heard of Fannie Mae. It's not Fannie Mae Candies. It's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're the two entities out there that everybody uses. It's, there's no secret, but you guys, you might not know this. If you go to me, Citibank, Rocket Mortgage, Guaranteed Rate, whomever, we use the same system. OK, it doesn't matter. So we take the data, we upload it into this one or two systems. Most of the time we run both. OK, and there's a reason why. And it's coming into this answer, this question. We run it. It'll come back and say your loan's approved or it'll say your your loan has been referred. It doesn't say denied. It'll say refer ineligible. And then you got to figure out why. Many times that is a decline. It, it just doesn't work. But. Once we get the, so let's say we get an approved eligible. So now that means the loan's approved. However, we have to validate the information. So for example, you put in on the website, you plugged in the data that you make $50,000 a year. All right. So the data, Fannie Mae's or Freddie Mac's information, their computer system algorithms reads the data and approves your loan. Now, when we print out your approval, but in there, it's telling us what we need to validate that income. So, for example, in your case, it might only ask for a recent pay stub. That's it. That's all we need to get. It might ask for a pay stub in last year's W-2. That's all we get. Even if you uploaded all your information into our system, we won't use it. It's just opening a can of worms that we don't want to open. It's not required. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not doing anything wrong. Basically, Fannie Mae is saying, hey, we like this loan and we'll approve it, but you have to validate it with these documents. And they tell us specifically what they need. Okay. And we get that. So then what we do is we, we, we get your loan approved through Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. We print out what we call the findings. And then we go line by line and see what it's asking to validate things. So when we ask you, we might come back to you and say, hey, we need an updated pay stub. Why? Well, the finding said we need a pay stub from you within 30 days of closing. So our pay stub might be from January. You're closing in March. Well, I need something either in the beginning of March or the end of February that is within 30 days of your closing. So that's why many times we'll ask you for additional documentation. Same thing with bank statements. There's some programs where we don't need a bank statement, but it asks you to upload a bank statement. I'm not going to use it because it's only throwing, it, it, like I said, it's opening a can of worms that I don't want to go down. So that's basically the process up to that. Then what we say, now you're in underwrite. What does that mean? Well, the lender that we're using, so there's Fannie Mae, there's 
there's you, the consumer, there's me, and there's a lender. So there's you, you need a mortgage. I'm your consultant. I'll find the best lender in the country with the lowest rates, lowest fees, everything that we can negotiate for you to get money from Fannie Mae. OK, so at that point, when we accumulate all your information, we'll send your information to the lender that's going to approve the loan, batch them up into billion dollar blocks and then sell it off to Fannie Mae. We send it to the lender, all the information, such as your pay stubs and your W-2s and whatever the findings asked for. They'll go through it and meticulously go through and dot the I's and cross the T's. And then they'll come back and say, everything we asked for, you got clear to close, schedule closing. That's how the process works. So when we go back to you and ask, you know, hey, we need an updated pay stub or something like that, don't get upset. It's just we're trying to meet those findings that were required. So in your case, probably most likely, if we run your information through the Fannie Mae Freddie Mac systems, one of them might only ask for a pay stub or a pay stub and a W-2 or a pay stub and a, and a whatever. But that's why we run both of them, because they will give you different decisions or ask for different things. And we usually go with the one that's the least encumbrance, if that makes sense. So thanks for the question. Greatly appreciate it. All right, so let's go to the next one. I went with you and your group because you have a heart, the heart of a day. <laughs> thanks, man. I, I appreciate it. Um, hopefully they answered every question you had. They responded in time. They responded quickly. They know what they're doing. What happens most of the time when you do apply, honestly, the files either route to me or my senior uh, management, and we dissect things and say, okay, here's here's where we're going to go with the loan, here's why, and here's how we're going to structure it. That's what we usually come back, or we should be coming back with you to say, you know, here's, and I al always do this. I talked to several people yesterday, and one person called in for a reverse, and I'm like, I don't know if I would do that if I was you. You're the boss. But I always tell you what I would personally do and what program, and the best thing is, and why do I always do this? the why. Why am I doing this? Why did I go this direction? Why are we taking this loan program and so forth? So uh, we, I always ask why, why you're looking to refinance, get a lower rate. Why? You know, you want to save money. Okay. Well, the, is the payment too high? No, the payment's okay, but I'm just, I just want a lower rate to this. wonder if, if you want to save money, wonder if we keep the payments the same, refinance you to a lower, shorter term, you pay off the, your, the house five years early, save a thousand bucks a month, you just save $60,000. Those are options for you. And that's what we try to educate you guys to. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, just a research credit improvement information and programs. Best, best raise that score first, best wishes. You lost me on that one, I apologize. Research credit improvement information and programs. If you would go to just check out my channel, check out the, the and then you're here, so you probably found me on YouTube. Uh, watch my, my videos, a lot of them go over credit. Like I said, the one that I look at it viral, I'm a little peon in this YouTube world. Um, you know, I had one that hit, I think it's at like 300,000 views now or something like that, and it's over credit scores. It's an old video of me just sitting there like this in my, in my den upstairs, and I just talked about 20 minutes going over your credit with, you know, how, how to just do a little bit of thing. Let me give you just one caveat on this. Ask your, somebody, you know, it might be aunt, a mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, somebody with great credit. Um, and you know, they've had their visa card for 20 years and they've never missed a payment. Ask them to be, it puts you on their credit, uh, their credit card as an authorized user. Don't even have them give you a card. What's your credit score go up? Okay. Just little simple things like that. that most people don't know. All right, so let's go. Uh, hold on one second. Dan, what states do you practice mortgage? Work? We're in about 30 right now. And what we're working on right now is on our website to go out there and post uh, the, a map of the whole country to let you guys know what states we are in. The goal is by the end of the year, be licensed everywhere. Um, we're in that process. And a lot of times what, what happens is it's a delay in the states. Like we gave up in New York. So if you're in New York, I apologize. Uh, we, we just gave up. Uh, there's there's just no light at the end of the tunnel there. But in most of the other states, we're either we, we're in the process of getting licensed now. We're waiting for the states or we are. Uh, so if you would shoot me an email and I'll get back with you on Monday. Anybody that's looking for the states that I am in, just shoot me an email. My my email down is, is oh, it's not there. It's Dan. That's my name at 
theradeupdate.com. I'll get back with you first thing Monday and let you know if the state that you're uh, you're looking for, if we're licensed there or licensed or pending. A lot of states, what they do is they do uh, give me temporary authority. So as soon as we apply, they give me like a 30 day or 60 day uh, okay to, to do loans in that state while they're processing the paperwork. So uh, that might be a state that you're in or I might even be licensed there already. So thank you so much for that. And I, I, great show. I, I appreciate you guys watching. I truly do. Um, let's see. What's the next one? All right. Can someone with a chapter seven bankruptcy two years ago, discharge even qualify for investors? Yes, you can. Uh, I'll, let me just grab the, the first thing here, the DSCR. I don't know what the, the fundamentals are there, but yes, you can. Uh, that, that, that is the perfect scenario for a lot of the non QMs because in your case, there's really no options. Um, you know, conventional guidelines is three years out of out of the bankruptcy. Uh, so you can't go that route. So you're stuck. And that's where we're a lot of people say, you know, these these programs here, they're like, those those programs are terrible. They're going to crash the market. No, they're not. You know, we all have crosses to bear. You might have had a cross to bear that you just couldn't you couldn't get through without the, the bankruptcy. Uh, so you filed the bankruptcy. Now you need options because hopefully that cleared it all up for you. And now you can move on. Uh, so that that so thank you so much for the question. But that's a specific, you know, there might not be, that might not be the program for you, the non-QM, maybe the DSCR, but maybe we can put you in over here. Is it a full doc? Can you give me tax returns and bank statements and, and pay stubs and so forth, leases and, and everything like that? So the more, the more information we can get from you, let's just say it this way. Let's say in your case, there's four different options. Okay. Best, better. Bestest, amazing, bad English. Let's say, you know, right now, what I'm thinking is, oh, yeah, he fits here. But as we talk to you, is we can say, oh, didn't know you could give me that. Oh, you have that. Oh, you've been an investor for years. We might be able to get you all the way into the Primo po program and didn't even know. But you called 20 different places and you got turned down because you don't qualify for a conventional loan. Okay, so that's what we try to do. And that's what I'm trying to do on the channel just to educate you. So if there's, if my YouTube channel is out there, please share it with people. Um, because the more people are informed, the better decisions they have and the less likely you are to get hosed. And I hope you guys know what I mean by hosed, deceived or overcharged and things like that. So thank you so much for the question. I, I really do appreciate it. Next one. Why are FHA interest rates so low, lower than, that? that is a phenomenal question. Okay. So they don't have to be. So let's go in, let's break down how the credit, how interest rates work, all right? And where FHA will come into play, all right? So you have a, you need a 620 credit score to get approved for a conventional loan, all right? And your credit scores, the tiers go up to 650 now or whatever they are, I don't, it's, it's irrelevant. The lower your credit score with conventional, the higher the rate. Okay, so if you have a 620 credit score and you're looking to go 95% loan to value or, or go with a purchase and only put 3% down, that's big risk to the lender. Okay, that's big risk because your credit score is low. There, there might be a reason. There might not be a reason. You just might have just limited credit or whatever. But in most cases, the credit score is low for a reason. And I'm not saying 620 is low, but you know when, when the credit scores go to 850, it's kind of low. All right. So in that case you're probably better off with an FHA because it's it's government guaranteed, right? It's, it, the banks don't have to, they're like, we're, we're going to pass. We'll, we'll kick on that one. But in your case, in this case, let's say you have an 820 credit score and you have, you're putting 50% down on the property. That's, there's really no risk to the bank on that. You're going to have a rate comparable or maybe even better than FHA. But the FHA piece is there to basically give those with, little less uh, credit worthiness, a, a better option to buy, and it's backed by the government. I'm just telling you the truth. Uh, the government has so much money that they're just giving it away. But um, so they, they back that mortgage. Okay. So the investors, what happens is when the, the bank holds that loan, if you default as a consumer, the government will make the bank whole. So back in the crash years ago, the banks didn't do it as bad as a lot of people thought because the government was subsidizing them so much with all these defaulted loans that the government was just paying all these claims out to the banks 
the banks didn't lose all that much money that they made it sound like they did. Okay, so that's that's the backdrop on how rates work. So yeah, in 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 some cases, the FHA rate is much 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 better than the conventional loan, and that's when we always go back to people and say, you know, yeah, you can get approved for a conventional, but I would take the FHA, and here's why. And then you have a lot of a lot of clients that are out there trying to get pre get pre approved to buy a new house. And then the realtors are out there saying, we're not going to present an FHA pre-approval because nobody wants to accept an FHA pre-approval. Why? It doesn't make any sense, you know, because it's backed by the government. Unless your lender deceived you, it'll close. The only caveat there is the appraisals are a little more strict when it comes to an FHA appraisal. Uh, but if there's no nothing wrong with the property, there's there's no difference if you go FHA, VA, USDA, conventional. There's really no turn times. A lot of people say, well, the turn times are much longer. It's going to take you twice as long. No, they need to educate themselves. I'm a, I'm a mortgage guy. I've done it for 33 years. I don't sell real estate. I'm not a realtor. I don't have a dog in that fight. I just do mortgages and I know mortgages. I might not know how to drive a car very well or tell you what day it is if you watch my channel. I know mortgages. Okay. So that's what I, but thank you so much for the post and thanks everybody for being here. Uh, let's get on to the next one. Is, is 2.62 good? Yeah, yes. Yes. But you know, it, the, the tough thing is, let me, let me answer that question in a longer version and don't turn the dial because it, I'll, I'll be, I'll be pretty fast with this. If you ever notice in my YouTube uh, comments or descriptions down below, when people ask me questions, I can't, if, if any, nobody should really say, Hey, what's, what's today's 30 year fixed rate and you're four and a quarter. Okay. Yeah. I do publish it every day. That's what's published in, in out in the web, but here is what goes into your credit or your interest rate. Okay. It's not, there's, there's not one size fits all. All right. It depends. And like the last person just asked, why is FHA rates better than conventional rates? Well, they could be, they, they don't have to be. There's a lot of caveats that go, that get involved that are a pieces of your your rate okay so your credit score has a huge uh to do with it so in, like in your case let's say your credit score is 620 and you're at 95 ltv that rate is fantastic but let's say you have an 800 credit score and you're putting down 50 percent. that rate not might not be the best so i need more pieces of the puzzle the pieces of the puzzle that i need if you ever email me saying hey dan what rate do you have i need to know your credit score your house's value, what kind of what size loan you're looking for. So is it a $500,000 home? You need a $250,000 loan. And what is it for? Are you just refinancing the loan that you have, which is called rate and term? Or are you getting cash out? You're pulling out cash to do whatever you want with it. Buy an investment property, buy cryptocurrencies, buy some more stocks, put it in a savings account for a rainy day. Doesn't matter. What kind of property it is? Single family home, condo, townhouse, four unit. All these are coming to play. What's the loan to value? Okay. So all that comes into play. So it's hard. I can't say, you know, hey, I got a 3.99 rate. Is that good? Could be. I don't know. Unless I have all that information. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense to you. I hope it does. So thanks. Thanks so much for the question. Let's go to the other one. Uh, is there a rate premium for DSCR? Rate premium. Yes. Uh, meaning it's it's not. So here, let me let me explain the mortgage packages to you. So there's conventional loans, which the bank, all the banks do. All banks do just, it's a standard, what, what's the 30-year mortgage, all right? Then there's government-backed, and those are FHA, VA, USDA, okay? Those are those. Now there's called what's called non-QM, and that's the DSCR package. That is a finance company or an investment firm or somebody like that that's doing these loans, packaging them up as an investment and selling them off as a bond. Okay, so it's it, there. These are completely different entities. So the rates are the, the rates vary all over the place. That's like again, on conventional rates and FHA, one is a government backed program and one isn't. All right, so that that's how rates uh, basically work. But DSCR, believe it or not, they they do have good rates. Now, if you looked at a DSCR a year ago, you'd say, hey, the rates are high. If you look at it today, they're not as volatile as the rates that I post every day. They're pretty, they're pretty stagnant. They don't move up and down much. So in today's world, we're seeing some of the, uh, the non-QM programs better rates than the, the other programs. So thanks, thanks for that question. Greatly appreciate it. Um, next one. 
And thank you so much, Dan. Watch your daily. Thank you so much. If if there's something else you guys want me to talk about or do or format, please leave it down in the description. I read every description, believe it or not. And when somebody posts back, that's me. So if you ever call me and say, hey, Dan, I, I, I did that, I'll be like, oh, yeah, it's Jeff over. You were out in Utah and you needed this. Oh, my goodness. You know, you do read these. Guys, I do it. Believe it or not, it's me responding on these things. You call in. I talk to people every day. And they're like, I didn't think we can talk to you. Call in. You know, I have no problem talking. I can only talk to so many people a day. I had the phones ring off the hook. But I'd love to talk to you if you want to. Hey, just can I talk to Dan personally? Just ask him a question. But feel free. And most of the time, they could just walk in my office and hand me the phone. And you're on the phone with me. So I got, I'm not hiding behind anything. This You, you, you see what you get. Um, Mr. Rogers, hello, everybody. Uh, this guy drinks whatever. Um, M, some of your comments on the YouTube, I, I would greatly appreciate it if you you didn't post. I mean, because some of the stuff you post is just it's it's ridiculous. Uh, so I'm gonna pop you out of there. I hated to do that, but I, I told you guys not to not to post that. Uh, let's see the next one. What is the cash out refi rate today with excellent credit? Okay. I just explained. So maybe you post it afterwards. There's multiple uh, pieces of the puzzle that I need on this. So if you would email me um, and if let me let me say this, if you're in the mortgage process right now and you have a loan estimate, email it to me. OK, why? I'll, I'll take your data. And like we said right at the beginning, I'm going to take your data and I'm going to scan the whole country to see if we can get a better uh, package for you. And what I mean by package is rate and fees. OK, so in your case, I don't know a lot of the pieces of that puzzle. So please email me. Email me this. The loan amount, the house's value, what your credit score is, what you're looking to do. I think I uh, cash out and you're pulling out cash, what kind of property it is and what state you're in. So email me at dan at the rate update dot com. As soon as rates post uh, Monday morning, I'll be sure to get back with you because I need I do need your credit score, property value. Loan amount. I already know it's cash out, but put in there it's cash out, and you were on the on the uh, YouTube live, um, and then the state it's in because I need to make sure that I'm licensed in that state that you're looking for. I want to just check the time uh, so I don't keep you guys on here too too long. We're getting close to an hour, and I didn't want to exceed an hour, so uh, thanks for that. Or we might be done with an hour because there's no more comments. If you got any more comments, guys, please post them because we're gonna be I'm gonna be heading out shortly uh, to go out and do some yard work and spend some time with my family out in the fresh air. Um, but just to conclude some things, I, I'm going to do these weekly as long as there's participation. Um, I, you know, I, you guys, I greatly appreciate you guys spending your time, you know, an hour, 45 minutes with me on here to ask any questions. If you have, if you're looking to buy a house, I'd love to help you. If you're looking to refinance and just want to kick the tires, what options are out there? I'd love to help you. If you're a realtor, um, those are what we're looking for right now because we have, we have clients all over the country and they're getting pre-approved. A lot of them are building. And a lot of them are doing the extended lock. And I might run through uh, that next week, do an extended lock video. But uh, we have a lot of clients that need help. And I want to, you know, we, we can go to my website, hit the options tab, and there's a thing there to fill out. I'll call you, make sure we, we you know, your information's there because you're going to represent me if I refer you out to uh, our clients or our clients to you to help them buy a house. So we're looking for realtors all over the country to refer clients to, to keep our YouTube family pretty tight. So let's go on here. Um, are 40 year mortgage rates becoming a norm? No, 40 year mortgage rates are basically right now from, there might be a, a, a one off or whatever, uh, but it's normally non QM programs. So you can do that. A lot of them are, you can get an interest only for the first 10 years and then 30 year amortization on the remainder or so forth. That's a, that's a, not a bad idea. Um, one thing, just to elaborate on this a little bit, I talked to a couple people actually this week, and it was weird because it was uh, multiple people the same week. They were in a forbearance, and they explained to me, Dan, I didn't need to do forbearance, but my financial advisor told me to do it so we can take that money and invest it. And then what, most, what a lot of the banks are doing, they're taking the balance that you owe them, throw them on the back interest-free. So if you did that, and that's what your bank's doing, can't blame you. Um, but if you're not, you're just out of a forbearance and you're like, I don't know what to do. Give us a call. Cause I, I thought that was that program when it ended the forbearance program, our phones were going to be ringing off the hook. Uh, next comment is honey buns. You're back new construction, single family home, 660 purchase price. 
with a 620 score. You know what? Let me, um, I'm going to try to do me a favor if you can. Please email me exactly that to dan at the rate update.com. So as soon as um, rates post on Monday, my kids tell me I look like bubbles on Trailer Park Boys when I put my glasses on and they're crooked because I stepped on them the other day. Um, email me that exact question. I promise you, I will respond to you first thing uh, Monday morning when rates post to let you know exactly what we can do for you. All righty. Thank you so much there. The next question is, can you use DSR of short-term rentals as opposed to yearly leases? A year lease? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can do Airbnbs. You can do short-term rentals. Yes, you can. That's a phenomenal question. And that's where it's hard for me to go through the guidelines here. But if you have those questions, that's what you call in and say, hey, can we do this? It's a, it's a short yes or no. Um, and if we can't do it, we always try to find an alternative. Here's what I hate. And I'll kind of leave it at that. But I'll answer the following questions is I think I said this in a, in a previous thing. I hate saying to you, can't help you. Sorry, click. Here's what I want. I want you to hear from me and all my all, all my employees. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, we, we're not able to get you approved uh, with that program, but why don't we do this? If we worked on your credit or, hey, once you are there on your job for two more months, we can get this done. Or, hey, you were in the forbearance. That's why, that's why we can't get you done. You make three more par- uh, payments on that. Now we can help you. So I always ask them the whys, the what ifs. What's, I want to come back to you with a solution instead of just saying, sorry, can't help, click. Because I had a, a lady uh, years ago who I was talking with and she started crying when I couldn't help her. But I talked to her for like an hour when I was hanging up. She's crying. I'm like, what are you crying for? She's like, I, I just want to. And she thanked me. I said, what are you thanking me for? She said, listening. So I hope we listen to you. So when we're when you're asking us questions, we listen instead of first talking. So we want to know what your goals are and how, let us help you achieve those goals. So that's the whole purpose of this. Um, next one is I emailed you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I promise you, you'll hear from me on Monday. Beautiful day <laughs> for your day. Unfortunately, it is. Um, next one is new construction townhouse 730. Okay. Would you recommend conventional? S- conventional. Uh, reason being is in your case, your credit scores are high enough. Let me read their whole thing. So I know. Town- yes. Conventional. Why? Okay. In your case, if you had a 620 credit score and you were giving me that scenario, I'd probably say FHA. Your credit score is going to put you high enough in there. So you will avoid, and let me give you the the pros of it and the cons of the FHA going at that route. Now, what we analyze is we analyze your payments over time. I usually look at a five-year term. So in this case, your credit scores are high enough to get you as good a rate as you would FHA. And that would also avoid us from paying an FHA fee uh, and a higher PMI factor. So FHA charges you no matter what HUD, FHA is going to charge you 1.75 points on your loan to do your loan. Okay. Not on refinance, but if you do an initial loan or a purchase or whatever, and then their PMI factor um, is 0.85. Okay. That's irrelevant, but let me explain to you. On a conventional loan, you avoid the 1.75 points up front and your PMI factor might be say 0.3 versus the 0.85. So not only are we saving on the upfront cost uh, for the FHA fee, we might be able to get you a better PMI factor, which then will help you in the long run on your payments as well. And then FHA, a lot of people don't know this. If you have an FHA loan, okay, and you didn't put 20% or 10% down, your PMI is going to be on there forever. All 30 years if you hold that loan. Okay, so right now we're even telling people, even if your rate, if we can get you in a conventional loan and you're in a a FHA loan right now, even if we get you the same rate, you're going to save money because we can remove your PMI. So that's an idea for people out there. But that's a great question. But yeah, I would I would do that as a conventional loan unless there's just something there I don't I didn't get. But just generically, I would do conventional loans on that. Uh, Can you talk a little bit? about third-party fees that we can shop for. Okay, yes. So most of the third-party fees that you can shop for, and you probably would have no idea where to go, but you have the option to do so, is your appraisal you cannot. But most of the time, it's it's the title work or the legal work or the escrow. Many times, you're can you you're allowed to choose your own title company in some states or escrow company in another. Most people don't realize that. They think it's just the seller controls all of that. That is not true. 
Many times they don't even give you the option to choose. I always tell you, hey, you're in Texas. Texas, uh, Texas and Florida has really high costs when it comes to that fee, the legal fees, the title fees. If you know somebody, let me know. Uh, we'll use them. Many times, though, we have national accounts with the, large, the largest title companies out there. Even if you know somebody, we can get you a better rate or a better lower fee than you would get on your own going to your buddy who might work there because we have a we, we might do, you know, $100 million in business with that title company a year where they're just trying to help you and they're getting a one off and maybe a family discount of 100 bucks. So but yeah, that is the that's the biggest area of what you can shop for that most people don't know. And then the attorney, you know, you pick your own attorney if you're looking to use an attorney in that. Um, so but the appraisal, the appraisals you cannot choose, for, unfortunately, um, and I can't choose them. So that part of the Dodd-Frank bill that was put in place back when the housing crash hit last time was they they do not allow us to call a, an appraiser now and say, hey, we need a 555 Main Street appraised tomorrow and I need the value to come in at 400. That's gone. We have to go into a database and just plug in the order and they randomly send it out uh, bids to appraisers. Then the appraisers will go out there and accept the bids and then do the appraisal. I don't even know who it is or when they're going to do it. We just correspond with the borrower in that case. So hopefully that answered your question in a long breath answer. So as you see, I, I like to answer thoroughly and sometimes off topic. So my apologies. Sorry for all the questions, but really appreciate it. I sent you an email. Thanks, man. I, I promise you, I will respond. Um, I might even respond over the weekend, but if it's a rate question, I'll respond Monday um, once the rates post. And then last but not least, uh, Exalt, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you for spending your uh, Saturday afternoon or morning with me and asking all these questions. You're not only helping yourself, you're helping other people that are in that same uh, position because you have the question. I'm sure there's th hundreds, if not thousands of people to have that. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the videos. We're going to go now. We are, we exceeded the hour. I got to get outside in this lovely weather because it's supposed to snow now on Monday. So thanks again. If you would, like I said, go to the go to our website, check it out. There's a lot of new features that we added there. If you're a realtor out there, please go to the website. Um, let me let me show you that one last time. Let me get out of here if I can find that. Uh, bear with me one second. I apologize for taking this long. Um, if you go over to the website. You're going to go right up to here. If you're a, a realtor or a mortgage advisor, the inquiry form. We're looking for realtors all over the country. Uh, basically, why you're going to click this? It's going to open up this form. If you have it, you have to log in with a Google account. That was the most secure way for us to do it. Fill it out. I will personally be calling you because why and why are we doing this? We have a lot of clients throughout the country that need a good realtor, not one that's just pushing them on a house. I, I'll talk to you and I'm going to really talk to you and, and kind of quiz you down on some things. You represent me. I want us to work together as a team to make sure our all of our borrowers find the right house for them. Not me, not you, but them. Okay. So that's the whole point about that. And if you're a loan officer looking for a new career or not a new career, there's a lot of people that just laid off hundreds and thousands of people in the mortgage business. If you're a good quality loan officer out there, please reach out to us. It's the same tool. You go to the inquiry button, uh, and just hit the mortgage advisor. And that's, oh shoot, I didn't even show you that. Right here, go to the inquiry forms, the realtor button right there. If you're a mortgage advisor, you click right there. Okay, so that is that. And I think we got one or two more questions. I'll try to wrap it up. Thanks, Dan. I'll send you an email. Have you used Fannie Mae Homestyle Renovations? Yes, we do. Last one, and then we're gonna go off of here. There, If you're looking to renovate your home, there is a slew of programs. There's the Homestyle, FHA has a, a 203K streamline. They have a 203K full, and there's other programs as well. So yes, they're they're really cool. Each one has their own little unique uh, reason to go that route. So if you're looking for a renovation or you're doing uh, work on the house, and it depends, you might not need the renovation loan. Maybe you just need a cash out loan to do the repairs. Uh, so those are the things that we talk to you about because generically, I greatly appreciate the question, but what are we looking to do? Okay, so please shoot me an email. Myself or my I, somebody in senior management will call you on Monday. They represent me. And once they talk to you, they get the answer. And I, I know everything that's going on behind the scenes. So we can answer that question for you and guide you down. Do you do a 203K streamline? Do you do a 203K? Do you do home, home renovations? Which program is best for you? And that's what we do for you.
and we explain why. Okay, why would we recommend that program? Like I said, FHA, the last question, FHA versus conventional. Why? Well, I'm going, I wouldn't go FHA. Why? Because we'd save you 1.75% in points that we would pay HUD. That's a lot of money. Okay, so that's that. Stand for president. No, thank you. <laughs> so thanks, guys. I greatly appreciate it. If you need me, please re- shoot me an email. Uh, let me run the banner across there real quick. I think it's there. No, nope, not there, not there. And it's the, not there either. So it's not there, but it's dan at the rate update.com. Thank you so much. Please make sure I even have a, a, you can subscribe to my newsletter. You can go to the website, scroll down to the bottom. It says it'll have the newsletter here. I'm excited about this. So let me, let me do this. Is my last thing I promise you. And then I'm going go down here, right here. The, the, every, all the information I give you every morning, you can see it right here and you can see it click by click by click throughout the day. But the one thing is my newsletter is right here and you can subscribe right here, but it's pretty cool. You click it open. It's once a week, this one. And then if you go to my social media, I post um, these all throughout the, the day, usually morning for sure in the morning and maybe in the evening if we saw uh, some major events take place. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. As long as we have participation, I'll keep doing these because without knowledge, you guys might make the wrong decision, or at least I like you having an educated decision. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.